Good evening, students. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Okay, I don't know if you can listen to me very well. Good evening, teacher. Yes, clear. Okay, yes, perfect. Yes. Because I'm having problems. I have a trouble with my internet connection. I don't know what's happening here. Right now, I'm using my, my phone data in order to run with the, the Zoom. So if uh, suddenly you are not able to listen to me very well, let me know, okay? Okay, perfect. How are you? Okay. Ready for the class? Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Okay, very nice. Excellent. We're going to start. Uh, but right now I'm going to start with the attendance list in order to call you uh, by your name in order to have the attendance for today. So as soon as you listen to your name, please tell me present, okay? Okay, give me a second, just give me a second. Here, yes. Okay. Adela Trinidad González Consuera. Adela Trinidad González Consuera. No. Aminda René Figueroa de Manzano. Present. Okay. Belén Batre García. Present, teacher. Okay, very nice. Uh, Carlos William Membreño Núñez. Present, teacher. Okay, very nice. De Debbie Yasmín Girón Ramírez. Present. Okay. Domingo Alexander González. Present. Okay. Ever de Jesus Candray Montano. Present, Mr. Okay, very nice. Jose Roberto Martinez Bernabe. Present teacher. Okay. <clears throat> Leticia Guadalupe Garcia de Miranda. No, right. No. Mariano Jose Paca Santa Maria. Sure. Okay. Oscar Anulfo Viatoro Herrera. I hear. Okay, very nice. Rose Mary Ventura del Cuello. Rosibel del Carmen López. Present teacher. Teacher. Oh. Yes. You took my advantage yesterday. Uh, let me check. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, I took it. Okay, very nice. Uh, Salvador Augusto Sorto Rivas. Sonia Yvette Alvarenga. Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemus. Present, okay. Walter Omar Castaneda Perlera. Present, teacher. Okay. Wendy Karina Morales Amaya. No. Okay. Very nice. Okay. Uh, I think you're done. Okay, awesome students. So we're going to start with another class. We're going to have a lot of activities to do today in order to have a practice. But before we start, I would like you to listen about um, 
yesterday class? What do you remember about yesterday? Can you uh, try to help me and to tell me something about, do you remember yesterday? About the conditionals? Which okay. Are, yes. Yeah. Uh, was uh, four of them, the zero, the first, the second, and the third one. Awesome. Very nice. Good with that. Okay. What else do you remember about yesterday's class, the rest of the, of the students? Mm -hmm. The topic uh, was about the, the way for selling something in production, uh, channels or distribution of some things about the the retailers. Okay, yes. Distribution channels, right? Distribution yeah, channel. You see in that uh, the zero. Yes, you see the zero conditional, especially in that. Yes, okay, very nice. Awesome. Okay. Um, so yes, sir, we, we were working with uh, some uh, introduction during the class. Of course, we mentioned the four conditionals and one of them, which is the zero, which uh, is the one we're going to be working. And of course, we went to a part in which we can have a different channel distribution, right? Or distribution channels about products. So we knew about a wholesaler and retail store, right? All those stuff. Okay, awesome, very nice. So today we're going to start with the class. And as I told you yesterday, we're going to have uh, information about conditional. But in this case, we're going to work just with zero. Okay, because uh, during the model, we're going to work with the four one. Yes, but uh, right now I want you to use the, the zero, the zero one, because uh, it is used about for truth and of course, in order to give advice or advices. So right now I'm trying to give you an explanation about, try to pay close attention. And um, then we're going to have another part in order to work for, okay? Do you have any question before we continue? No? Clear like water. Yes. Awesome, very nice. Okay, here we have, um, can you watch the screen? Yes. yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, very yes, nice. Okay. So here we have a poor about conditionals. Where we have our conditionals, which if and only time classes, okay? So this is a big part of uh, conditionals, but right now we're going to be focused on the zero one, okay? So as I told you yesterday, conditionals are special in order to have a usage. And we have no to miss if. All the time we use conditional, we're going to have an if sentence, an if clause, okay? So um, we're going to start with conditionals. Okay, uh, what about you, Oscar? Can you help me to read this one? Okay, conditional. There are two parts to, to a conditional sentence. The condition and the result, the result depend on the condition. Okay, very nice. So we have two uh, part of conditional sentence. The first one is the conditions sentence by itself and the result. As I told you that yesterday, if I do this, this is the result. If Walter do this, uh, this is the result, right? Okay. So this is the one that we need to uh, work for, okay? And the result depends on the condition. As I tell you, uh, uh, you're going to have a result, but it's going to be a cause about the condition, right? So that's why I told you yesterday. We're going to have the next part. Uh, I don't know if we, Devi, can you help me to read this? Uh, the second, right? Yes, yes. 
In English, we have real life conditionals. Real, real conditionals. Real conditionals, which talk about real possibilities and possibilities. Unreal conditions. Possibilities, unreal conditionals, which talk about imaginary or impossibly impossible 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 situation situations. here are some examples of each type okay very nice awesome so it says in english we have real conditionals as i told you yesterday we have the first the zero and the first uh which are the ones that are used in order to talk about real things the zero one is a real one. The first conditional is a real sentence, but it's going to be a possibility. It's not that it's going to happen because we say it's going to depend on how the process goes, right? But it's a possibility, it's a real one. Then we have the, the second and the third one that are on the unreal conditionals one, because that's not going to happen. It's about what we could have done, right? So it's not going to be through. Uh, it's not going to be possible. It's something that is not real. So in this case, remember real conditional, we talk about real possibilities, as I told you. And on real condition, we talk about imaginary or impossible situations. Okay, imaginary. It's like to say, um, I will go to Brazil if I had money. Right? It's like to say, si tuviera dinero fuera Brasil, right? That's an unreal condition. That's algo irreal, ¿verdad? Que no, no, no pasa. O sea, no tengo el dinero, no puedo ir a Brasil, right? Okay. So that's an unreal condition. Real conditions is different. Uh, real condition is like when you say, um, si pago a tiempo mi cuota, um, no recibo cargos por mora. Okay? So that's a real thing, right? Ahora, si usted hace una with the first one, si yo um, juego fútbol, eh, mañana estaré cansado. It's a possibility, right? Because maybe you are going to be tired about, about playing soccer. So that's a real, real ones. And of course, we're going to have some examples for each type, okay? Let's go with examples. Sure. Yes. Uh, just say uh, the, the real condition used in, in zero and one condition. The in real, real condition, in the, yes. In, this, in real is in the second and third condition. Yes, second and third. Okay. Yes, awesome. Okay, thank you. Thank okay, you. very nice. Okay, here we have some examples. We're going to uh, talk about the real conditionals. Okay. Uh, let me check. Um, Vanessa, can you help me to read the zero conditional sentence? If someone breaks a window, an alarm goes off. Goes off. Okay, very nice. If someone breaks a window, an alarm goes off. So that's a real thing. If someone breaks a window, an alarm goes off. Is in order to say that uh, if you break the window or if someone breaks the window, the alarm is going to start, with, right? Because it's going to uh, try to make um, an alarm for the owner of the place or of the owner of the building. So in order to let them know that something's going wrong in the office, right? Or in the, on the building. So in this case, Remember, we're going to work with simple present. Simple present here and simple present here. Do you remember when you learned simple present usage? ¿Se recuerdan cuando aprendieron el simple present? Yes, a little bit. A little bit? Uh -huh, a little bit. So in this case, we, know, we, we, we don't need a little bit. We need clear. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Remember, simple but present. What do you mean about the structure of the sentences? Yes. Okay. Um, yes, the structure of the sentences. Let me check here. Okay. Very nice. Remember, simple present. 
Simple present is going to be a tense that are going to have two auxiliaries. Which one are the auxiliaries of simple present? Do I have? Do. Have. And have, are you sure? That. Having has. Does. Do does. and does, right? Does. Do and does. Oh, okay. okay, very nice. Those are auxiliaries. And I want to make you clear. Those can be verbs in a sentence too. So I can have a do as auxiliary and do as a verb. It's not going to be a problem, okay? But you need to be clear. So we have an instruction for a sentence, right? For affirmative, we have an instruction. The structure is a subject plus a verb, sorry and a compliment. That's a structure. For example, uh, they play or they work, for example, in a hotel. Okay, here we have an structure. Here we have the subject is here, they. Here we have a bird we have here, right? And then we have a complement. We have it here, right? Okay, that's affirmative statement. Subject, verb, and complement. That's going to be a, a standard structure. We're going to have always the same structure, okay? For example, they work in a hotel, okay? Uh, this is a structure, very nice. But what happened with the structure for third person? Do you remember something about third person? You add an S. The does. Okay. Affirmative. Third person. Okay. Very nice. It says that for affirmative and third person, it is almost is the same like like the the one we have above with the subject plus a verb, but we can have a different uh, chain with the verb. It can be an S, it can be an ES or IES, right? And then we have a complement. Okay, that's a structure. Ah, uh, how it's going to be working for? Ah, uh, of course, we have a rules in order to talk about this one. Do you remember the rules? For example, well, I uh, with the S, mm -hmm. uh, it's about the words that ends with um, a consonant. You only agree the S. Then uh, about the Y E S is when they ends in Y. And you change it for the Y E S. And awesome. Very and nice. For the, the, the verse, right? Okay, yes. It's, it's, it's exactly for verbs, okay? Very nice. The first rule says, uh, yes, Rosivelle is going to talk something. Not the chair, sorry. Uh, okay. Okay, there are three rules. The first one is a general one. We add S to all the verbs is the first one, right? We add S to all the verbs. Okay, this is the first one. Okay, what about the second one? All the verbs that end with the O, X, double S, CH, S H, right? We add E S. All the verbs that end with those O, X, double S, C H, S H, we add E S. That's the second rule. Okay? So in Spanish, todos los verbos que terminen con O, X, doble S, C H, S H, nosotros le vamos a agregar. Es. 
¿Ok? A todos los verbos que terminen con esa, con, que tengan esa terminación, X, O, S, SH o CH. ¿Ok? So, la primera regla es la general one, es la general. Todos les agregamos ese. Luego tenemos la segunda. Los que no entran en la segunda pasan a la primera, ¿verdad? Ok, esa es la, esa es la, eso es lo general. Of course. Ok, then we go to the third one. Ok, the third one is a, is a rule, but it has an exception. I'm going to explain it right now. So it says, uh, we are ES are the verbs that end with Y, but before it's a consonant. Why we are the S? Because first we change the Y because an I, and then we are the S. Ah, but what happened when the uh, verb ends with a Y and it is used with a vowel? So we only add S. We don't modify this third one, okay? Muy bien, la tercera regla dice que a todos los verbos que terminan con Y, pero que antes de la Y, tienen una consonante. Ahora nosotros le eliminamos la Y y la cambiamos por una I latina que nosotros le conocemos, right? Y luego le agregamos ES. Por eso se dice que se le agrega IES. Ok, esa es la regla 3. Pero hay una excepción. A los verbos que terminan con Y, pero que tienen una vocal antes de la Y, no sufren la modificación, sino que pasa a la primera. Solamente le agregamos S. Ok, very nice. No sé si if you have any doubt. Do you have any doubt about? No? Is it clear? Yes, teacher. Ok, very nice. Excellent. So, for example, we can have a, a sentence here. We can have uh, uh, Debbie. Debbie is, is written like this, right? Yes. yes. Debbie uh, study. This is the verb. But the rule says that Y is preceded by a consonant, right? So we delete Y as I and then ES. Debbie studies English at night. So here we are, we are applying the rule, right? This one. Okay, Debbie studies English at night. So it means that we have to take into consideration these rules in order to work for, because in the zero condition, we're going to work only with simple present. So we have to be clear about the usage. And remember, this rule for a third person is only for affirmative statements. Esta modificación es solamente para las oraciones afirmativas, ¿ok? Solo para oraciones afirmativas. Ok, do you have any question until here? No? Ok, me I erase it? ¿Puedo volar esto? Wait. Ok, 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 ok. Ok, very nice. Ok, now we go with the structure in negative. Ok, the negative is, of course, we always need subject. Then we need an auxiliary, right? And then we need not. Then we need a verb and a complement. Okay, this is a structure for negative. And this is the, the structure for the, the whole sentence, even third person and all the rest, okay? For example, if I say, she does not work in Tigo, for example. She does not work in Tigo. I can have two options. I can use does not, or maybe I can use doesn't, right? So it's up to you if you want to use does not or doesn't. 
And the verb is going to be always in the same way. El verbo no sufre modificación. ¿Por qué? Porque ya llevamos un auxiliar, ¿verdad? Estamos en tercera persona, pero como llevamos auxiliar, que es el does, entonces ya no lleva ninguna modificación. Ok. So if we use another sentence, for example, like you, you don't play uh, the guitar, for example. You don't play the guitar. So we are using the auxiliary do and not as a contraction, okay? You don't play the guitar. Okay, awesome, very nice. Any question you want to hear? No? Clear, 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 clear. Okay. May I raise it? Okay, it's very nice. Okay, very nice. Okay, this is the zero conditional. Okay, so that's why it says someone because we're talking in general. The verb break is going to have an S, so it's breaks, right? A window. And of course, alarm is going to be uh, thin, is going to be it, right? So the verb is goes, okay? goes so we have the modification here that's why it's going to be like having marked i'm going to let you know that you're going to use it with third person okay of course very nice it's really important for us to make intonation and pronunciation clear okay for example walter can you please read this sentence if someone writes a window an alarm going off. Okay, very nice. Good. Uh, let me listen to uh, Domingo. Can you please help me to read this? The same one. And someone breaks a window, uh, an alarm goes off. Okay, very nice. Awesome. Uh, let me listen to Carlos. Okay, Vanessa? If someone breaks a window, an alarm goes off. Very nice. Awesome. Aminda? Okay. If someone breaks a window, an alarm goes off. Goes off. Goes off. Uh, goes off. Okay, very nice. Devi? If someone breaks a window, an alarm goes off. Okay, very nice. Uh, let me listen to um, Mariano. Someone breaks a window and alarm goes off. Okay, very nice. Rosibel? If someone breaks a window, an alarm goes, goes off. Goes off. Very nice. Excellent. Belen, can you help me? Yes. If someone breaks a window, an alarm goes off. Okay, very nice, excellent, very good. Okay, it's really important for us in order to uh, make a clear pronunciation. I'm going to tell this in Spanish. En español nosotros estamos acostumbrados a hablar arrastrado, ¿verdad? Muchas veces no pronunciamos bien la palabra eh, y hablamos como casi siempre como con pereza. ¿verdad? Más o menos así nos escuchamos. Okay, uh, in English, it's really important for us to make the pronunciation clear. En el inglés es importante pronunciar clarito. Eh, como decir, hay que ponerle un poquito de flow a la pronunciation, ¿verdad? Para que ustedes tengan un acento eh, estilo norteamericano, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, no es lo mismo que yo lea y someone breaks a window and a alarm goes off. ¿Verdad? A que yo lea, if someone breaks a window, an alarm goes off. ¿Se nota la diferencia? Yes, right? Uh, okay. Yes. Okay, ¿qué es lo que tengo que hacer entonces? Uh, to get accustomed enough, acostumbrarme. No querer hablar el, el English like I speak into Spanish. Uh, that's a, the first mistake. No, no querer hablar el inglés como lo hablo en español. Okay, esa es, esa es la primera barrera que tenemos que nosotros 
romper, okay? Uh, why? Because if I speak English as in a, as afraid, si hablo inglés con miedo, lo primero que va a hacer una persona norteamericana que me diga, what? Uh, sorry? Porque el americano no le va a hablar como nosotros. ¿Qué dijo? Eh, eh, disculpe. Mm -mm. Americans like that is, oh, 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 repeat please. I can listen to you. Uh, can you tell me one more time? They speak like this. Ellos hablan con seguridad, right? Si usted escucha cualquier norteamericano, ellos le van a hablar de esa manera. Diferente a nosotros. Cuando vamos por primera vez a un lugar, eh, buena. Sí, fíjense que vengo con miedo, right? So that's the difference. That's why I, I tell you. Por eso les, les menciono, porque ya estamos en intermediate level, ¿verdad? Y tenemos que perder aquí esta barrera. Tenemos que nosotros romper eso. Empezar a hablar sin miedo. Si yo, por ejemplo, le digo a Debbie, ok, me lee esto, le, Debbie tiene que leérmelo sin miedo, fuerte. Eh, Vanessa, Domingo, Walter. Y hay que ponerle como ese plante a la hora de hablar. Ok. Y también soltar un poco nuestra boca. Ok, porque si yo estoy como con pena, if someone breaks a window and the goes soft, tampoco. Relax. Relájense. Right? If someone breaks a window and the goes soft. Yes. Just an observation. Well, in my case, eh, it's like I try to very hard, but it's like when I have the opportunity to talk with someone that I already handle it very good the, the language, it's kind of I I I have a lot of blank space. It's, it's, it's like, oh my God, he already knows, she already knows, and it's like eh, she will know that I don't I don't maybe don't get it or something like that and maybe that's the the fear or the shame and it's because we are well in my case i already know that the person know knows about everything and and i just try to to have a conversation because i want to but yeah that it's in my case uh, i don't know okay yes that's normal uh, remember that you are you're not accustomed to speak English because you don't speak Spanish all the time, right? So that's why you're going to be like, oh my God, if I say this in order to say this. Imagine, imaginémonos que pronunciamos una palabra. Hay muchas palabras que se pronuncian casi idénticas. Right? Casi idénticas. Imagínense que ustedes, por decir una cosa, digan otra. Y usted, ah, oh, si digo esto por lo otro... No, ustedes con seguridad, ¿verdad? Ustedes tienen que dominar eso, tenemos que acostumbrarnos a eso. Pero para eso, ustedes necesitan empezar, ¿ok? Here in the class, cuando yo, cuando yo les digo in the class, it's time to you in order to speak. This model is focusing more speaking. Este módulo está más enfocado en, en hablar, right? Ok, but uh, what is the thing? So you have to ask me about some questions. Uh, then when I push you to work in pairs, you need to take the time in order to speak English. Don't speak Spanish. Okay? No, no hablen español porque español ya, bueno, no sabemos bien porque tampoco lo hablamos bien, ¿verdad? Pero por lo menos ya nos comunicamos en español, right? But we need to learn English, so I need to speak English. Right? Okay, so that's, that's what we need to uh, work for. Okay? That, that's uh, part of Okay, here we have the first conditional. The first conditional is uh, we're going uh, to have just a take a look. Uh, here we have the simple present, but then in the sentence, we have a future with will. Okay, so this is another one. When we talk about if I miss the bus tonight, I'll take a taxi instead. Es como decir, ¿verdad? Si yo pierdo el bus, o si me deja el bus, como decimos en salvadoreño, um, me tendré que ir en taxi ok, o sea que esta es una posibilidad si yo todavía no lo he perdido es si llego a perder el bus, ¿verdad? ¿qué me va a pasar? ¿qué me va a tocar irme en taxi? eso es conditionals, ok pero right now nos vamos a enfocar en el zero conditional luego tenemos los que son uh, unreal ones son los que no son reales, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, tenemos el second conditional, que, que acá, then when we work about uh, second conditional, is something that is not real. 
For example, if I say, if I own a car, I will drive to work. Uh, let me listen to uh, Ever. Can you please read this sentence? Which teacher? This one. The one okay. I want. Uh -huh, yes. If I own a car, I would drive to work. Okay, very nice. La oración acá tiene lo que es el pasado simple. Y acá tiene, ¿verdad? Lo que es un modal, el would. Si nosotros tradujéramos literalmente esto, si yo ¿verdad? tuve un carro, yo manejaría el trabajo. Así, así se leería si la traduzco literalmente. Pero los condicionales no se traducen de una manera eh, tal y como está ahí, sino que llevan su peculiaridad. En este caso es como decir, si tuviera un carro, ¿qué significa? Que no tengo, ¿verdad? Que si tuviera un carro, claramente yo me manejaría hacia el trabajo. ¿verdad? O sea, que acá es lo como quien dice, ay, si tuviera un carro, yo manejaría para el trabajo. ¿verdad? Es como decir esto en Spanish. Ok, so, esto es in English. Pero, ¿qué es lo que lo hace condicional? El if. Like, it's like a suppos supposition. Yes. Uh, well, not like suppose uh, because it's like something it's not going to it's happen. It's like it's not a dream. Yes, it's it's like like a dream or something you would like you to have. To. Algo que le gustaría tener. Okay. Pero que no lo tiene. So in that in that case, um, it's really important. Uh, for example, if we erase the if, si nosotros eliminamos el if acá, la oración ya no sería condicional. Porque ya no diría si yo tuviera un carro, sino que ya diría yo tuve un carro. ¿Qué es lo que lo hace condicional? El if. If I own a car. Ese if lo convierte en un condicional y ya cambia su significado. Y dice si tuviera un carro, ¿verdad? In this case, the first verb is in past. Yes, here we use simple past okay. in the if sentence. And here we use a would and the verb in its base form. Porque después que llevamos nosotros un modal, el verbo siempre va en su forma base. Es una regla general. Okay, entonces es, es como es. Sí. In the second condition, Always use uh, uh, the verb in, in past, simple past. Simple past, yes. In the second conditional, always, always. Okay. Si ya usted no utiliza simple past y utiliza otro, ya no estaría haciendo second condition. Okay. Uh -huh. And if, for example, in the second sentences, I will drive to work, I only use the wool, or for example, I can use the cool. Uh, yes. Here in wool, I can use uh, might, could. It's no problem. Podemos, en aquí podemos uh -huh. utilizar esos condicionales, no hay problema. But always. Always, sí. Acá si okay. no lleva un, un modal, tampoco. No, no estaría correcto. Right? And uh, que... in the second verb is present. Uh, this is not a verb. This is a, mod a model. The verb no, no, is no. drive. The drive, yeah, correct. Yes. Uh -huh. yes, drive is going to be in base form, en la forma base. Base form, okay. Sí, porque siempre que llevamos un modal, después de un modal, el verbo siempre va en su forma base, ¿verdad? Ok, very nice. Ahorita le estamos dando una, una listada así de manera general, ¿verdad? Porque nos vamos a enfocar más en el zero, pero es para que tengamos una idea. Luego tenemos el third conditional. Uh, let me listen to Rosibel. Can you please help me to read the third conditional? Sure. If I had studied harder, I would have passed the test. Okay, very nice. If, I'm sorry. If I had studied harder, I would have passed the test. Very good. Uh, let me listen to um, Adela. Can you please help me to read this one? If I had studied harder, I would have passed the test. Okay, very nice. Y acá nos dice, ¿cuál es? aquí es la, la interpretación es diferente, ¿verdad? Es algo que 
sí pudo ver, o sea, sí es real lo, la situación, pero es algo que yo hubiera querido que fuera diferente. ¿Verdad? O sea, tiene un, un mensaje contrario a lo que realmente pasó. Como decir, por ejemplo, si yo, um, aquí dice, si yo hubiera estudiado, ¿verdad? Como decimos nosotros con todo, hubiera estudiado bastante, yo hubiera pasado el examen. Right? Ok, o sea que acá lo que me está diciendo es que como no estudié lo suficiente, no pasé el examen, ¿verdad? Ok, perfect. So that's what a third conditional is focusing. Something that could have been different. Algo que pudo haber sido diferente, ¿verdad? Ok, ahora acá la diferencia es que ya llevamos lo que es el present perfect. ¿Verdad? Y el past perfect. En el if, en la oración con el if, acá llevamos el pasado perfecto. También ya vieron el pasado perfecto en los módulos anteriores, ¿verdad? ¿Se recuerdan? Uh -huh. Vamos a hacer un examen de los tenses. Vamos a ver. <ríe> ok. Cuando llevamos el auxiliar had y el verbo en pasado participio. If I had studied harder. Ok. Acá... Si yo le quito el if, ¿verdad? Acá en la oración diría, yo hubiera estudiado, ¿verdad? Bastante. Ok. Ah, pero cuando le pongo el if, si yo hubiera estudiado bastante, y aquí llevamos el present perfect, yo hubiera pasado el, ex, el examen. Miren, el present perfect, llevamos el have as auxiliary, Acá es el past perfect, llevamos el, el have, porque es el pasado de have, ¿verdad? Past perfect. Y el verbo en present, eh, pasado participio, igual acá pasado participio. ¿Ok? So, this is the condition of one. Pero lo vamos a, a pasar ahorita al zero. ¿Ok? Here we have the zero ones. Here we have the sentence. Uh, for example, we have the first one. Uh, can you please help me to read, Domingo, this sentence? Uh, if you don't water flower, flowers, they, they did. Okay. And here we have, uh, look, what it is. Um, it's like la suggestion. Es como un consejo. Es como una sugerencia. Por ejemplo, si le decimos, si no riegan las plantas, se mueren. O sea que le estoy diciendo en otras palabras, regalas plantas, ¿verdad? Ok, if you don't water flowers, they die. Ok, miren, acá llevamos present simple o simple present y llevamos acá present simple. Este es... Sí, sí. Ajá. Sí, sí. O sea que es, es prácticamente para que le dé sentido a la segunda oración. Es correcto. Porque, por ejemplo, uh -huh. si yo, yo digo la oración, they die, está correcto, ellos mueren. Uh -huh. ¿Quiénes? Ah, pero cuando yo digo acá, if you don't water the flowers, si no riegan las plantas, aquí sí ya me da sentido, ellas mueren, ¿verdad? Ah, ya me enfoca que son, estamos refiriéndonos a las flores. Si yo también elimino el they die y solo dejo, if you don't water flowers, quedo como que agarro impulso, pero no termino de la carrera, ¿verdad? Porque digo, si no riegan las plantas, ¿qué es lo que pasa? Pues necesito Basically, un resultado. Teacher, Ajá. In the second sentence, you don't have to put in again the flowers they die because you already did in the first one. Which one? Which? Sorry. Basically, you don't have to to put the flowers in the second sentence because you are already uh, you are you are already talking about the, the the flowers in the first sentence. Yes, but where you but offer you cannot just uh, say flowers again, but you can use a subject. That's why we're using they in order to make reference about flowers. O sea, que acá utilizamos el they porque hacemos referencia a las flores. Right? If you don't water plants, they die. Es the die, they, sorry, perdón, they. they Uh, está haciendo referencia a las flores. O sea, eh, 
en nosotros en español normalmente no utilizamos sujetos. ¿Verdad? Si ustedes, si ustedes analizan cuando hablamos, decimos, voy al parque, voy a la iglesia, voy aquí, comí esto, como esto, juego esto, hago esto. Nunca digo, yo hago esto, yo como esto, yo voy aquí, yo juego. No, ¿verdad? El yo casi no. Sino que hasta cuando escribimos, voy a correr cinco minutos, como, duermo, estudio. Solo utilizamos normalmente los verbos, ¿verdad? Ok, en el inglés pasa una cosa muy peculiar. Que siempre vamos a llevar, después de que terminamos con una coma, porque aquí con la coma cerramos la primera oración. Ya después de la coma viene otra. Siempre tenemos que utilizar un subject. En todas las estructuras siempre vamos a tener que utilizar un sujeto. En este caso aquí el sujeto, eh, estamos hablando de you, ¿verdad? Que está haciendo referencia. If you don't water the flowers. Ya en la segunda, el sujeto ya no es you, sino que estamos hablando de que son las flores. Pero la utilizamos con they para hacer referencia. Ok, ¿es clear? Yes? Yes. Okay, very nice. Let's go with the next uh, sentence. Aminda, can you please help me in the second one? Yes. Uh, if you have a headache, stop watching TV. Okay. Here I'm giving an advice. Aquí estoy dando un consejo, ¿verdad? Okay. Uh, imagínense que, digamos que uh, Debbie fuera mi hermana, por ejemplo. Okay. Y estaba a decir que me duele la cabeza, me duele la cabeza, pero está viendo la novela desde las seis de la tarde y son las nueve de la noche y todavía sigue viendo la novela, ¿ok? So, entonces yo le digo, if you have a head up, stop watching TV. Si, si te ve la cabeza, perdón, si te ve la cabeza, ¿verdad? deja de ver tele, pues, porque más te va a doler, ¿verdad? Es, digamos, como dándole un consejo, pero entre hermanos como que no es muy consejo, es más un regaño. ¿verdad? Pero digamos que, que es un consejo que yo le daría a alguien, ¿verdad? Ok, si sí. if you have a headache, stop watching TV. Deja de ver TV. O sea que yo acá puedo utilizar también lo que nosotros llamamos los commands. ¿Se recuerdan de los commands? Si no me equivoco, se lo vimos en módulo 2, parece. Ok. Cuando en los commands es una cosa peculiar en la cual yo no necesariamente utilizo subject. Porque lo digo de manera general, ¿verdad? Stop watching TV. Es como dar una orden, ¿verdad? Stop watching TV. So, if you have a headache, stop watching TV. Entonces, acá, lo que debemos recordar nosotros es que tenemos que jugar prácticamente con el presente simple. Right? Ok. Vamos a ver acá y aquí tenemos. La if plus, como les decía ayer, va a ser la que siempre vamos a llevar if. Siempre, siempre va a llevar if. Y esa la llamamos if plus. ¿Verdad? Presente simple. La main class, ¿verdad? O la result, como les decía también ayer, es la que nosotros ya no llevamos el if, sino que es el resultado del if. Y en este caso también va en presente simple o lo podemos utilizar como imperative, ¿ok? Perfect. ¿Any question? No. No. Ok. Ok, y aquí we have another part. It says, uh, with zero conditional, we express general truth or we give advice. O sea que nosotros con el, el zero conditional hablamos sobre generalidades, ¿verdad? Que es de manera real, cosas reales generalmente. Y también nos sirve para dar un consejo o dar varios consejos, ¿verdad? Independientemente de quién sea. Ok. Vamos acá entonces a tener acá lo que es um, uh, por, uh, Oscar, can you please help me to read this? Use of this condition versus when time flows. The word is implies that a situation happened less frequently and the word when implies it happened more frequently. Frequently, okay, very nice. The word if implies that the situation happens less frequently. And the word when implies it happens more frequently. So 
en este caso, quiere decir que yo puedo utilizar ya sea if o puedo utilizar when. ¿Verdad? Y es lo mismo. No cambia nada. La única diferencia es que cuando yo digo if, es como que, ¿verdad? Es, no, no es muy probable de que algo pase. Y cuando utilizo el when, es prácticamente que aseguro que va a pasar así. Por ejemplo, ¿verdad? Es como decir la if. If you uh, go to the gym, you get in shape. Si usted va al gimnasio, usted se pone en forma. O sea que es algo real, pero tiene que ir al gimnasio, ¿verdad? Ok, ahora, ¿qué pasa? When you go to the gym, you get tired. Utilizando el when en vez del if. Cuando vas al gimnasio, te cansas. Right? Entonces, cuando utilizamos when, eso sí es claro que pasa, ¿verdad? Porque obviamente el que va al gimnasio y que va no solo a tomarse la foto y a hacer ejercicio, obviamente se cansa, ¿verdad? Entonces, el when me da más probabilidad de que algo pase. ¿Ok? Así que esto es parte para que ustedes lo manejen ahí. Por ejemplo, ahí tenemos acá, miren. Uh, vamos a ver si me ayuda Rosibel a leer esta. Which, which. This sentence. Ok. If I have a day off from work, I usually go to the park. Ah, ok. Very nice. If I have a day off from work, I usually go to the park. Acá dice, si yo tengo un día libre, ¿verdad? un trabajo obviamente, yo solamente o normalmente voy al parque. Ok, very nice. Veamos qué pasa con uh, lo que acá nos implica. It implies that having a day off from work is not frequent. Significa que no es muy común que yo tenga un día libre en el trabajo. O sea, es muy difícil. Can you repeat the last word? Uh, park, frequent. Fre frequent. 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 Yes. And when you agree the L and Y? Frequently. Here. Fre frequently. 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 Ok. Very nice. Vamos con la siguiente. Vamos a ver acá si me ayuda a leer esta oración a uh, domingo. Wait. When I go to my favorite restaurant, the words is green my big name. Okay. When I go to my favorite restaurant, okay, cuando voy a mi restaurante favorito. O sea que como es mi restaurante favorito y como ya me conocen porque ahí voy seguido, ¿verdad? When I go to my favorite restaurant, the waiters greet me by the name. O sea, los meseros me llaman por el nombre. ¿Por qué? Porque como ya es mi restaurante favorito y entonces yo voy seguido, ellos ya me conocen, ¿verdad? Pase, don Julio, pase, ¿verdad? Y aquí, etcétera. Ok. Entonces, la diferencia entre el if y el when es que uno tiene más probabilidad de que algo pase y el otro no, ¿verdad? Ok. Very nice. Uh, ¿Any question? ¿Alguna pregunta? Or clear like water. Okay, very yeah. nice. And it says it implies that I go to the restaurant frequently, ¿verdad? Aquí dice que voy al restaurante más seguido. Okay, nos vamos a quedar hasta acá porque ya acá está, ya iríamos al first conditional, ya se lo vamos a ver later, ¿verdad? Nos vamos a quedar acá porque es el zero conditional. Okay, entonces acá este zero conditional me sirve a mí para poder trabajar uh, in order to work with the topics that I'm going to be using for. Okay, here we're going to have a practice. Uh, we're going to have a building vocabulary. Look at the short and read examples below. So we have direct channel, retail channel, wholesale channel. Uh, we're going to categorize the examples according to the channels presented in the chart, check answer with a partner. So we're going to have uh, about these ones, the ones we have here, We're going to match in here, uh, categorize examples according to the channels presented in the chart, check answer with a partner. We're going to work in pairs. We're going to discuss if one is a uh, retail, uh, wholesaler, the one is a uh, 
it can be, for example, a manufacturer representative, a distributor, it can be a consumer, retail consumer. We're going to choose these ones, okay? The ones who are here, direct channel, retail channel, wholesaler. So we're going to discuss this one. Remember, we have a producer and a consumer, okay? This is the direct channel. We have three different channels. I'm gonna check it here. Distribution channel for consumer products. The, the direct channel is the producer and the consumer. Here's the one that I have, right? It's a direct one, okay? Then we have a retail channel. The retail channel is that we have the producer. The producer gets with the retail and the retail gets to the consumer, okay? Then we have a wholesale channel. The whole channel, we have a producer, the wholesaler or distributor, and then we have the retail, and then we have the consumer. So we have different routes, okay? Different channels. So the direct one is because it's from the producer to the consumer. The producer to the consumer. And the retail channel is going to be producer, a retail, and the consumer, right? It's like three, three different ways. El que produce, ¿verdad? El minorista y el consumidor, ¿verdad? Okay, and the wholesale channel, we have the producer, uh, mm -hmm. the wholesale or distributor, digamos que, el, el que después, ¿verdad? Va el proveedor y luego tenemos al, el que le compra al proveedor, ¿verdad? O al distribuidor o al, o al mayorista, que es el minorista. Y luego tenemos lo que es el consumidor. So this is the wholesale channel. Este es un poquito más extenso, lleva más vueltas, ¿verdad? Para llegar al consumer. Entonces tenemos estos tres eh, canales y en base a eso nosotros vamos a escribir acá, ¿verdad? Eh, sobre cuáles pueden ser algunos de ellos. Y podemos escribir también acá si puede ser un retailer, consultant, distributor o eh, wholesaler. ¿Es clear? Yes. Okay, very nice. Okay, I'm going to give you a few minutes in order to do that. And then we're going to be back in order to work with the next part. Okay, I just want to make sure all of the ones who have the camera off are really active. A los que estamos con la cámara apagada, todos estamos activos, ¿verdad? Active? Yes, teacher. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sure. Awesome. Teacher, someone is talking to you. Oh, they buy a message. Ah, uh, Sabado says he's driving. Yeah. Okay. Teacher. Yes. Let me a few minutes. Uh, I'm a cooking right now. Okay, very nice. Thank you. Okay, okay. Let me choose now to make order of these ones. Okay, if you have any trouble, just call me, okay? In order to move you from different group. Si de repente están con alguien y hay problemas de conexión o algo, me, me lo hacen saber para ver si los podemos mover de grupo, okay? Hola. Hello. Yes, I can hear you, teacher. Okay, very nice. I think Salvador is not uh, able to participate right now, right? Um, I guess. Teacher, I have an observation. Uh, yes. Um, 
I, I don't know if you can, but uh, maybe tomorrow I will be as a listener. So I was thinking about if we can change, because I think I the third one in the list, if we can change with the person that it uh, uh, toca hoy uh, ah. to stay before the class. Oh, okay. In order to uh, to be taking the part of the participation later on. Yeah. Yeah. O yeah. Okay. For, for tomorrow. I, right? I, may, Ah, uh, ya, yeah, ya, yeah. uh, o sea, eh, como no, no creo que voy a poder estar después de la clase mañana, eh, tal vez cambiar con ella, porque yo creo que soy la tercera, o sea, que a mí me tocaría mañana. Ok, very nice. Mm -hmm. It's no problem. Uh, just let me know tomorrow, ok? Yes, yes, sí. Ok, very nice, excellent. So, I'm going to move you to a different group, then. Ok. And of course, uh, your English is really good. Keep keep on practice. Okay, thank you. Okay. Let me hear. Number six, your turn. Categorize the examples according to the channels presented in the chart. Check answers with part. And Carlos, can you read the first one? Yeah. Hi, teacher. Hi. Uh, please help us. Uh, Adela can hear the suction because uh, her connection have a breakdown. Yeah. And I I can hear because my baby's crying. <laughs> Okay, okay, I know, I know, I understand that. It's something that is not your problem, it's something that's natural, right? Because yeah. I have a I have a little daughter. Hello, baby. Yeah. Crying. Porque está llorando la bebé. It's a boy. <laughs> oh, it's a boy. Okay. <laughs> Porque está llorando el bebé. Why are you crying? Porque está llorando. Ok, está bien bonito, ya está grande. Gracias. ¿Cuánto tiempo tiene? Gracias, Dios. Y sí, se parece a usted, ¿verdad? <ríe> sí, eso me han dicho. A así es la que tenemos con mi esposa, salió idéntica a ella, como <ríe> versión mini de ella. <ríe> ok, entonces lo que voy a hacer ahorita, Sonia, la voy a, la voy a agregar con alguien más. Uh, aquí estoy, lo que pasa es que en mi internet, ah. Ah, cuando, yo, cuando yo entré, entonces estaba diciendo que, que íbamos a ir a los grupos, pero no sé en realidad qué vamos a hacer. Podría explicarme. Ah, vaya, está en la página número 10, el ejercicio 6. Ok. Lo que vamos a hacer es que según el cuadro como el que trabajamos ayer, vamos a, a poner si es un consultant, un distributor, si es, por ejemplo, un retail channel, un direct channel, eh, un wholesale. Vamos a ver ahí dependiendo de lo que hemos visto. Según el cuadro que está eh, de los tres canales que tenemos, ¿verdad? el direct, direct channel, retail channel y wholesale channel. Ok. Thank you. Ok, very nice. Close from the channel. Mm -hmm. The cowboy buys clothes from other manufacturers to sell in their stores. Gap. Other manufacturers to sell in their store. Mm. I think. 
other manufacturers. I think he's maybe retail channel. The retail maybe. channel? Retail channel. I, I think. Retail channel. But I'm not sure. Oh, well, by clocks, maybe gap by clocks, okay, manufacturing and selling the stuff and okay. retail channel. Cook. What? A retail channel. Retail channel. The producer, the tailor, and teacher. We have yes. a question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just in time. <laughs> eh, okay. I understood. Telepáticamente me llamó, ¿verdad? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. We have a kind of an idea. Eh, for example, in the first one, we thought that Amazon selling this to the customer through an old platform is the um, the third the third mm -hmm. channel. Because Amazon is, the, is, is not a producer. It's a wholesale distributor from others, uh, this, for others producer. Amazon doesn't produce anything. So I don't understand if we have to choose one of the, uh, the third one of producer and customer, retailer, customer, or what exactly have to looking for? Okay, yeah, in this case, remember, of course, Amazon is an online program, right? Or not yeah. platform. Um, they have some uh, methods in order to distribute their products. Yeah. But they, the sale is directly from them. Uh, direct channel. Yes. It's okay. direct channel. Okay. Yes, because when you want to buy something, you pay with your credit card or your debit card directly mm -hmm. to the platform there yeah then they are the in charge in order to distribute your product but we have to oh, it means for example amazon in my case in my opinion it will be a distributor i teacher can you repeat that word i can D distributor 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 Beer. Beer. Yes. okay okay distributor Okay, and that is my opinion. Okay, quizás como, perdón, como el, aquí la, la duda es que nosotros no es que tengamos que elegir un, un, un ciclo, sino que ponerle el nombre de qué es lo que es Amazon. Esa es mi duda. Okay, para. Si Amazon es un distributor, ¿por qué a nosotros en El Salvador nos cuesta comprar con Amazon? Because doesn't have, uh, they don't have, sorry, eh, como alcance. Okay. Okay. Entonces, ¿será, eh, se, ¿será que sería sí, un distribuidor? No, uh, no, maybe not. Sí, le okay. había puesto ciudad de... No, ahí me quedé, no, y lo, no me acuerdo si lo puse sin salvador algo. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, I, I try, I, I think I get uh, the point. Uh, maybe in this case, Amazon, it could be a retailer. Okay, think about, remember, you, okay, go, to, you, you go to the online store, imagine yeah. you choose a pair of uh, shoes, for example. Yeah, but the point is that I have to pick one of the five Okay. and you, name, you can pick one of the ones that you have in the in the in the number five building vocabulary. The oh, channel, okay. retail channel, wholesaler can be a producer, a wholesale distributor, retailer, consumer. Ah, okay, okay. Because it's almost the same the ones that you have uh, above, right? Okay, okay, okay. It's, uh, it's because we think we have to choose a whole cycle, so that is the confusion. No, 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 no. It's uh -huh. the, you, you need to tell if it's Only a wholesale distributor, a producer, a retail consumer. Maybe you can have a <clears throat> more of one in a, in two of the, of the sentence. 
puede haber más de dos en, en las oraciones. ¿va? Por ejemplo, la misma que tiene, si digamos que usted dice que en la 1 es un producer y en la 5 can be a producer, it's okay, no hay problema. But it will be only one answer. No, puede ser dos no. veces. Digamos que puede haber dos, uh, digamos que acá pudieran haber dos consumer, pudieran haber dos wholesaler, dos... Uh, no, por ejemplo, in the, in, the, in the first one, I, I, I can say the Amazon is a producer and also a retailer. It no. Will, only will be a one answer. One answer. You can always say, okay. if you want to, to, for example, if you want to... Uh, let them know there is a producer and a consumer, you can say direct channel. <coughs> okay. Because you, you're going to uh, mark about both of them. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Okay, very nice. Rossi. Hello, Professor. You finished already? Yes, we're ready. We think so. Okay, very nice. So, in number one, you have retailer. Yes. Amazon sells Kindles to its customer through its own platform. Okay, very nice. Very good. We're going to check uh, when we get back, okay? Okay, teacher. Okay, very nice. Okay. Miren, un revendedor, porque te dice que, que, que provee a las líneas independientes de supermercados con productos. Así es, ¿verdad? Es muy similar a los grocerías de grocerías, pero tienen muchos diferentes. Okay. Do I purchase a book? This is independent online. Prove, prove a lines independent. Seria direct channel. This is one mistake of 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 the platform of 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 the of the manual, but the the only difference is the name. Also, grocery supplies. And the and the last one better grocery supplies, but the sentences a line of an independent grocery search with purchasing book is the same. Mm, it, yeah, it's the same sentences. The same. Uh -huh. It's the same sentences, only the, the 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 main name is the difference. Uh huh. And to say the number three is the same to the number six. Is a, a a wholesale channel. A wholesale channel uh, because they sell for it in a book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I agree? Yeah. Okay. okay. But I got it. A, Okay. Cool. We are finished. And computer... <laughs> I don't... It's a little I, confusing. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't sure in the bill now. That's well, part of the process to be like not sure about anything. Ah, uh, okay. Yes, yes. That's, it, it's no problem yeah, if you're not sure. We should. We should. Uh, we should have two, uh, two options for this because yeah. 
uh, with that uh, uh, at one point it's a specific for this because that says that sells and and the made it sweater with the the natural person too but mm. they distributed to to the other companies for sales too okay and so we we got a, a this idea for for this company and we choose for to 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 option for this for this a uh, company okay very nice we're going we're going to check uh, right now that we're going to be back okay okay perfect okay very nice so we're go we we're going to the main room right now yeah yeah i'm gonna um, send you to the main room okay Okay, very nice. Are you ready? Yes. <clears throat> okay, very nice. We're going to check if uh, we are correct or not correct, okay? Okay, for example, we have the first one. Uh, can you help me to read the number one? Uh, let me listen to Mariano. Okay, this one. Amazon sell Kindles to its customers down its our platform. Uh, Kindless, Kindless. Kindles. Uh -huh. Oh yes, Kindles. Amazon sell Kindles to its customer down through its, our platform. Th through its through, platform. Through its platform. Okay, very nice. Okay. Amazon sells kindness to its customer through its own platform. Okay. Which one do you have in here? A direct channel. Okay, direct channel. Very nice. Okay. The rest, do you have something different? Wholesaler. Wholesaler. Yes. Okay, very nice. Somebody else? Direct channel. Direct okay. channel. Direct channel. Okay, who else? It's wholesale. Wholesaler. Okay, very nice. Just an opinion, teacher. The Kindles are the best. Okay. Yes. Very nice. It's only that three option. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear it very well. And and, and Celsius organized is the um, the three option is. Uh, is the one wholesale wholesale channel? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, very nice. Okay, who else? I, I think direct channel. Direct channel. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about if we start with a debate? Empecemos con el debate. Why do you think it's a wholesale channel? Why do you think it's a direct channel? I think Amazon is a intermediate organization, but it's no 
but it's not produced. Uh, it's it's um, products to buy, yeah. but but Amazon buy and and sell product, but it's no produce or, or make a product or or, or, or of service. Uh -huh. Okay, very nice. Okay, very nice. What about the rest? Mm, I think Amazon don't sell product, but it's a channel for distribu distribu distribution. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay, very nice. What about the rest? I understand Kindle <laughs> is Amazon sell product. Okay, okay, very nice. What about the rest? In my opinion, teacher, um, as it all says, Amazon obviously is not a producer. So in my case, I don't choose the wholesale channel. I only choose the wholesale because Amazon only distributed 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 products from other companies, manufacturers, or whatever. So in my case, that's what I choose wholesale, but only wholesale, not the wholesale channel, because in Amazon doesn't produce anything. Okay, very nice. But the Kindles, who produces the Kindles? The, the, the Kindle uh, is, is developed for yeah, Amazon. Kindle is uh, it's for Amazon product. It depends, but in the most of them, it's Amazon. Okay, so very nice. So according to this sentence right now, it's talking about the Kindles, right? It's, um, it's like for Amazon's uh, stuff, right? It's something about Amazon produce. So in this case, the, they are talking about the Kindles, and they are talking about um, they sell these in their in their own platform, right? So it's like something specific that they have. So in other words, if you go there, you pay directly to Amazon, right? With your credit card or with your debit card, in order to have the Kindles, right? So, which one do you think right now in order to just make clear? Direct channel, wholesale distributor, or wholesale? Direct channel. Direct channel. Okay. It's a direct channel, right? Because they are, you are buying a Kindle that is produced by Amazon. So you are having something from the producer to the consumer, right? Uh, different is if you buy a pair of shoes. The shoes are not produced by Amazon, right? No, -uh. uh, they are produced for another place. But Amazon got it, so Amazon bought the shoes in uh, to the producers, and then he is going to send you the pair of shoes when the ones you you decided in the platform right so that's different but right now with the kindles is something that amazon they really use for its own so here's it's going to be direct channel okay very nice let's go with the next one uh let's listen to carlos can you please read the next one carlos okay i can buy products from different manufacturers and sells them in their stores. Okay. Which one do you have there? I choose, uh, please show me the option, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the retail channel. Retail channel? Retail channel. Okay, very nice, awesome. Somebody else has something different? No, a retail channel. Retail channel. channel. Retail channel. 
Por mí es Wholesale Channel. Wholesale Channel, teacher. Wholesale Channel. Case. Okay, yeah. there are retail channel and wholesale channel. Okay, very nice. The rest? <clears throat> wholesale channel for me. Wholesale channel, very nice. What do you have? Wholesale uh, channel. Wholesale channel, okay. Debbie, what do you have there? Mm, I confuse, I distributor. Distributor, okay, very nice. Aminda, what do you have there? Uh, for the second, and yes. it is a retail channel. Okay, remember, very nice, excellent. So I keep buy products from different manufacturers, okay, and sell them in their stores. Awesome. Okay, so they sell the products in the store, so they buy from different manufacturers. Which one is the correct there? So we have the producer. Producer and producer. Then we have somebody who buys in a bulk, right? Because he bought. Do you think IKEA is a retail? Retail. This is oh, their oh, store. Oh, it's a wholesale. <clears throat> it's a wholesale. So uh, in that case, it cannot be retail channel, so right? Right. So it means that it has to be wholesale channel because uh, IKEA is going to be a wholesale or distributor because he bought them in a, to the producer, right? Then because they bought so they bought something in bulk, so people is going to go there in order to buy as a consumer or maybe they can buy for that in order to be a, a retail. So the next one is um, a wholesale channel. Teacher, just to be clear, yes. um, okay, uh, bulk, you told us that is about mayoría. Yes. <clears throat> okay, then retailer is uh, al por menor. Yes, retailer is el, men el minorista. Llamo okay. Las tienditas, la, ya que ya están vendiendo por menos. Ya okay. wholesale, digamos, o distributor ya es el que le provee a las tiendita. Revendedor, por decirlo. Ajá, ¿no? digamos que ya okay. wholesale, ya, ya no, digamos como, vamos a ver, Coca-Cola no, porque Coca-Cola, Coca ellos, ellos son su propio, ellos son de direct channel, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver, ¿cuál podríamos poner como retail, como wholesale, retail? Para retail una tienda, imaginémonos una tienda que tenemos nosotros en nuestra colonia, ¿verdad? Eso retail. Retail. Horse uh -huh. uh, uh, is in is uh, venta por mayor. Correcto. Uh, uh, por ejemplo, venta, por, venta por menor. Retail. Retail, yes, venta por menor. Imaginémonos que vaya, tenemos una tienda en nuestra colonia, en nuestro barrio. Y en el wholesale, ya nosotros tenemos una comercial que está en el centro. ¿verdad? Imaginémonos que se llame comercial eh, Figueroa, por ejemplo. Pero estamos hablando que tiene bodegas enormes, ¿verdad? Que si van a vender sopas maruchan, eh, compran por miles de cajas. Y luego ellos son los que salen a, ¿verdad? Mandan personas a sacar pedidos a las tiendas de que cuánto va a querer y a ofrecer. Y esos wholesale son los que andan, por ejemplo, varios llegan a la misma tienda, ¿verdad? Y el retail le compra el que le da más barato. Para que sí se lo pueda vender al consumer de una manera más más cómodo y tener mayor ganancia, right? Los chinos. <laughs> ok, very nice. Vamos con la the third one. Vamos a ver si me ayuda con la third one, Walter. Uh, who's seller? Uh, ok, but can you help me to read this? Amazon grocery supplies online on independent grocery stores with purchase and um, bulk. Okay, very nice. Awesome grocery supplies online of independent grocery store with purchase in bulk. Okay. Um, here says awesome grocery supplies 
a line of independent grocery stores. Okay, with purchase in bulk. Which one do you think? Retail or <clears throat> wholesale? Retail. Wholesale. Okay, we have retail, we have wholesale. Producer, retailing and consumer. Okay, the rest? Retail. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, number three is retail. Retail channel, very nice, excellent. Let's go with uh, number four. Can you help me to read number four, Oscar? Okay, their computer sells from its own online platform and call center. The computer sells through its own online platform or call center. Okay, this one, which is going to be? Direct channel. Okay, very nice direct channel because they're saying but uh, on on my platform and the call center that they have specific for them. Direct channel. Okay, very nice. Let's go with the next one. Uh, let me listen to Domingo. Can you help me to read this? The guy boys uh, close the from other manufacturers to sell in their store. Tourists. Okay, the GPA buys clothes from other manufacturers to sell in their stores. In this one, which one is? Uh, it's a red tie channel. Okay. Also channel, maybe. Okay, you take. By clutter, many manufacturers. Yes, the GPA buys clothes for another manufacturers to sell in their stores. So it can be direct channel, right? Okay, very nice, excellent. Let's go with number six. Oh, it's, well, it's it almost the same like this. What is number yeah, five? It's the same. Yeah, it's the same. The, the number five, what is the answer? What is number five? Num number six, sorry, number six. No, it's, just... it's because you told the gap is direct channel teacher, but maybe we have a confusion because the sentence says the gap buys. So, oh, no, 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 sorry. Yes, I got confused. That is number five. Yes, number five is not direct channel, it's a wholesale. Okay, wholesale. yes, wholesale. That the last one is just the same is a direct channel like this one. Re like retail, sorry, retail. It's uh -huh. the same okay. as the third one. Yes, yes. Okay. Perfect, very nice. So we have it. Right now we're going to go to the next part. We're going to have a conversation. So we we're going to have here a part. Um, can you help me to read this? Please oh, give me a chance. Um, Aminda, can you help me to read this, please? Okay. Uh, decide on the most appropriate distribution channel for a product base on the information from a matrix analysis. Analysis. Uh, analysis. Okay, very nice. This is the objective. I will be able to decide on the most appropriate distribution channel for a product uh, based on the information from the matrix analysis. Okay, very nice. Uh, here we have a question. Which products need a faster distribution speed? ¿Cuáles son los productos que necesitan distribuirlos rápido? Right, which ones? Okay, what distribution method is your competition using? Okay, imagine we're working in, uh, in some uh, specific of cells. Because not all of you work in sales, right? Not all of you work in ventas, right? Uh, tienen diferentes áreas. But imagine if you work in uh, sales, um, which one do you think is the product that is needed to distribute as fast, rapid? The food. Food. Food, food okay. Very nice. Medicine. Uh, medicine, yes, of course. 
What else? Maybe some um, animal stuff. Animal stuff, yes. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. So those are the products that are needed to be distributed as soon as possible, right? Okay. So in that case, what do you think is the distribution method that some of your competitions are using? In this case, the question is not going to be good in all of you because it's different, right? Porque ustedes no trabajan, no todos ustedes trabajan en ventas. Entonces la pregunta va como un poquito compleja porque no está en esa área, ¿verdad? Porque habla de la competencia. ¿verdad? ¿Qué método está utilizando la competencia? Ese es en el caso de que ustedes trabajaran en ventas, right? Okay. Hey, we have a conversation. Um, I'm going to choose uh, some of you in order to have a practice. I'm going to choose Rosibel. It's going to be Ed. And Philip is going to be uh, Sonia. OK. OK. Can I start? Yes. Okay. The business is going well. I never thought our ice cream will sell like this. Yeah, the bus is always packed with the people. We had to set our own ice cream shop. We don't know anything about running our own store. Let's ask the manager at the ice cream shop downtown. So Tammy, he will want to buy our incredible ice cream. Okay, very nice, excellent. Uh, repeat after me, okay? The business is going well. The business is going well. I never thought our ice cream will sell like this. Yeah, they bought is always packed with people. We have to set out an ice cream shop. We don't know anything about running our own store. Let's ask the manager at the ice cream shop downtown. Certainly, he will want to buy our incredible ice cream. Okay, very nice. Here we have a conversation. What is the conversation about? Mm -hmm. Ice cream. Ice cream, okay, very nice. What else? The method for distribution of the ice cream. Okay, yes. I think they want to explain it like, mm, I don't know how to say in English, uh, como expandir. Expand, yes. Expand, yeah. Yes. Okay, they, they want to have a, their own store, right? They want to open a new store. Okay, very nice, excellent, very nice. Okay, here we have a conversation. Here we have three questions, okay? You're going to go to work with your classmate. You're going to practice a conversation and then you're going to ask for these ones, okay? And then we're going to come here in order to have an explanation about this, okay? You're going to go right now in order to have this practice. Try to practice as much as you can the conversation and then to answer the questions, okay? I'm going to change. Okay, yes. Okay. Um, okay, there we go.
Ok. Uh, no sé si puede ver mi pantalla. Sí. Ok. Uh, if you want, you can be here and I will be Philip. Ok. Um, the business is going well. I never thought our ice cream would sell like this. Yeah, the pub is always packed with people. We have to sell our, our ice cream shop. We don't know anything about running our own store. Let's ask the manager at the ice cream shop downtown. Certainly, he will want to buy our incredible, incredible ice cream. Okay. We can change. Um, I will start and then okay. you can. Okay. The business is going well. I never thought our ice cream will sell like this. Yeah. The booth is always packed, packed with people. We have to set our own ice cream shop. We don't know anything about running our, our own store. Let's ask the manager of the ice cream shop downtown. Certainly we will, he will want to buy our incredible ice cream. Okay. Then we have the three questions and the first one says, what channel of distribution is feeling suggesting? Um, the, um, what channel? For me, it is suggesting a direct ice, direct ice cream, <laughs> a direct. Channel the right channel because they want to sell the or maybe ice. not it, it maybe because philip is talking about sell the ice cream to the shop downtown do air and phil know how to run a store no El César lo dice ahí. Faltón. Which one? Do you think Phil suggests we help the business grow? Philip. What do you think, Domingo? Uh, the number of one, the number of one, the, the, the question one. Yes. Is, um, the, Philip suggesting so the running or one store yes yes hello 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 carlos i the the third question i i think this helps to grow the business which yes uh, the first suggestion is going to be held to business. Because how cause Philip said the Ed had a incredible ice cream and he need settle your uh, own ice cream shop. 
I think de, uh, his own tienda para ofrecerle su helado también. Pero creo que sería venta directa. Sí, creo que. Uh -huh. Do Ed and Philip know how to how to run a store? No, they don't know because uh, we don't know. Look at the example in the box, then complete the exercise below. I can teach you. Teach you. Teach you. Teach uh, with questionario <laughs> is done. Ah, oh, okay, very excellent. So we're going to be back in a few minutes in the main session. This chart, the one you're having in the the screen is, is going to be explained by by the teacher right now. Okay. Okay. No problem. Thanks. Okay. Tenemos un nombre bien raro, pero acá abajo si busca. Certain. Si sí, significa por cierto, ciertamente. Ok. Uh -huh. Yes, certainly. Pero... Ok. That's good, excellent. Yes, certainly. Yeah. Es como, bueno, eso es lo que voy a explicar ahorita. Hay ciertos uh, aspectos que necesitamos al momento de hablar, como para decir... Por ejemplo, en español, claro, sin duda alguna, mm -hmm. no problema. Okay, so <laughs> those expressions are, are going to be explained right now. Ah, okay. Okay, very nice. Okay, very nice. We're going to have this chart in here. Um, we have the questions. What channel of distribution is Philip suggesting? Which one do you have about the conversation? I think the it's a channel. Or direct channel. Okay, okay, can be both. Very nice, okay, the rest? Better channel. Okay, very nice. Is Philly suggestion? Philip is the one who says, we have to set our own ice cream shop. So the question is, what channel of distribution is Philly suggesting? ¿Cuál es la que sugiere Philip? ¿Qué channel sugiere que hagan, verdad? Entonces the sería... El... In the store, in the downtown. Ok, it says... Que ese, entonces sería un direct channel, ¿verdad? Porque lo que está proponiendo es que ellos por ahorita son un retail channel, yeah. ¿verdad? Pero lo que él está proponiendo es que ya ellos... Perdón, no son, no son un retail, sino que ellos son el... Este sharp, el de están ellos produciendo ¿verdad? para el retail y para el que el vendedor, right? 
Y ellos, lo que está proponiendo Phillips es que sea un direct channel, ¿verdad? Porque ya ellos elaborarían siempre el live screen y ellos lo venderían directamente, right? Al consumer. Ok, very nice. Uh, do Ed and Philip have, uh, know how to run a store? ¿Tienen experiencia ellos como? They don't have any clue. No. Ok, they don't have any clue, they have an idea. Very nice, excellent. Ok, do you think Philip's suggestion will have the business grow? ¿Creen ustedes yes. that it's going to be uh, very nice in order to grow? Definitely. Yes. Mm, yes. Maybe. Maybe. Yes. Okay, because nice. because before to take a, a, a decision, uh, uh, I think it's, it's better to do a, a benchmarking or, or, or a, a marking a study. Uh -huh, yeah. a study. Okay. Before, yeah. Okay, very nice. Excellent. Very good. Yeah. So it's not just going to open a new store. You have to make an evaluation, right? Uh, you have to take up all the possibilities of, of gaining uh, some extra information from different people. Okay, very nice. Okay. Let's get it through. Hola. Let's get it through. Yes, yes. <laughs> that happened, yes. Okay. If you hear, if you can watch here, we have an expression certainly, right? Certainly. Repeat certainly. Certainly. Okay, we make a song. Mm. Mm. No es certainly, mm -mm. sino que el esa pronunciación del T-A-N lo hacemos prácticamente con nuestra garganta. Certainly. certainly. Repeat, Cer certainly. 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 Okay, very nice. So we call those uh, some expressions they're going to be using in order to show certain or sure you feel about an action or event. So, it's an expression of certainty. ¿verdad? Son lo que utilizamos para expresar ¿verdad? una seguridad en algo. So, we use them in order to show about certain or sure about something. For example, uh, I don't know if you can help me to read this one. Uh, Debbie, okay, Debbie, help me to read this one. Expression of certainly appear Cer Certainty. <laughs> okay. Certain expression of certain certainly mm -hmm. appear before the main verb in a sentence, but after the auxiliary verb. Ah, okay, very nice. Expression of certainty appear before the main verb. So, aparecen antes del verbo principal, verdad? And after the auxiliary verb. Y cuando vamos al verbo auxiliar, aparecen después del verbo auxiliar. Ok, so we have two different uh, ways of using. Ok, uh, let's go to read this one. Let me listen to... Uh, let me share the ones. Bernabe, can you please re read these sentences? Ok. Which... Teacher, the sorry. That are marked. Oh. Okay, okay. The investor is certainly coming tomorrow. The managers oh. obviously choose the wholesale approach to distribution. Okay, very nice. Okay, this is the usage that we use as in Spanish. Es lo que utilizamos en español. Esto sí lo utilizamos nosotros igual, de igual manera en Spanish, right? So, es como decir, ah, ¿verdad? Los, ¿verdad? los inversores, ¿verdad? Con seguridad mañana vienen, right? Los inversionistas, ¿verdad? Con seguridad mañana vienen. Es como decir acá, con seguridad. O seguramente mañana viene, ¿verdad? Ok, es como decir eso en Spanish. The investors is certainly coming tomorrow, okay? Very nice. Ahora tenemos la siguiente. Uh, the managers obviously choose the wholesale approach distribution. Esta hasta la usamos nosotros para todo, ¿verdad? Obviamente, obvio, okay? Entonces, 
¿verdad? Así lo utilizamos en Spanish. Es como decir, ah, los gerentes obviamente eligieron, ¿verdad? Ser un wholesale approach distribution, ser un mayorista. ¿verdad? Dedicarse a, 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 a distribuir por mayoreo. ¿Ok? Entonces, eh, esto nos ayuda a nosotros como para hacer un énfasis, ¿verdad? De que estamos dándole seguridad a lo que nosotros queremos hacer. ¿Right? Nos sirve para eso, como para estar, estar seguros de algo y tener la certeza de que algo así va a ser. Vamos a ver con la siguiente parte. Vamos a ver si me ayuda a leer esta parte. Uh, vamos a ver. Ever. Ok, teacher. The investor. No, this one. Sometimes. Ok. Sometimes expression of certainty can be placed at the beginning of the sentence. Ok. Sometimes expression of certainty can be placed at the beginning of the sentence. Yeah. Some cases. It's not always. Some cases. Uh, the certainty expressions can be at the beginning, right? Okay, for example, let's go for the examples here, the ones that we have here. Can you help me to read, Belen, the examples? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Uh, suddenly, the managers will know how to arrange for distribution and Douglas, the shipment will arrive on time. Okay, very nice. Sorry, when we talk about this one at the beginning, that it's like to say, for example, seguramente, right? Is that the translation? Seguramente los gerentes vendrán, right? Para agendar una distribución. Okay, seguramente, okay, con seguridad, right? You're talking about certainty. Okay, doubtless, sin duda alguna, the shipment will arrive on time, right? Sin duda alguna. Es como decir, doubtless es decir sin duda alguna, ¿verdad? Eh, el cargamento llegará a tiempo, right? Ok, so in that, ca in that case, um, is used in order to talk about what are going to be something that you are certain to know about the usage, ok? Then we have, for example, all in likelihood. When we, have, when we use all in likelihood is to say um, seguramente, ¿verdad? Eh, es es de manera probable a pasar, ¿verdad? Ok, tenemos por ejemplo, obviously, of course, ¿verdad? Son los que nosotros utilizaríamos. Ok, repeat, certainly, certainly, obviously, obviously, in all likelihood, In all likelihood, surely, surely, doubtless, doubtless, of course, of course. Okay, very nice. So tomorrow we're going to work more in this part in order to have like uh, a different a view of this tomorrow okay because uh we are all on time i have to take the attendance list for today so as soon as you listen your name please tell me present okay okay give me a second give me a second here yes okay adela trinidad gonzalez consuegra present okay aminda rene figueroa de manzano present Ok. Belén Batres García. Present. Ok. Aminda, usted se va a quedar. Uh, you going to stay with me after the, the, the rest of the class leave? Ok. Teacher. Okay. Yes. Uh, that's what I'm, uh, I told you before. Then you, would you mind or Aminda mind to change with me for today because I'm, I'm not possible. Um, uh, ok. So you want to be today? Yeah, because tomorrow I, I, I can't. Okay, Aminda, is there no problem? Uh, no problem. Okay, very Thank nice. Thank you, Aminda. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, very nice. Uh, Carlos William Bembreño Núñez. Present. 
Okay. Uh, Debbie, Yasmin, Giron Ramirez. Present. Okay. Domingo Alexander Gonzalez. Present. Very good. Ever de Jesús Candray Montano. Present. Okay. José Roberto Martínez Bernabé. Present teacher. Okay. Leticia Guadalupe García de Miranda. Mariano José Paca Santa María. Ok. Oscar Anulfo Villatoro Herrera. Present. Ok. Rosemary Ventura de Arguello. Rosibel del Carmen López. Present. Present. Ok, ok. okay. Salvador Augusto Sorto Rivas. Present. Ok. Sonny Yvette Arbarenga. Present. Very nice. Vanessa Noemí Reyes Lemos. Present. Ok. Walter Omar Castaneda Perlera. Present. Ok. Wendy Karina Morales Amaya. Ok. Very nice. Students. Ok. See you tomorrow, students. Have a good night. Good, good night. night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay, Belen. So this space is in order to, um, if you have any doubt about the topics that we have seen, uh, if you want to get some extra information, so it's a space in which you can choose or you can tell me about something that you really want to like have in knowledge about. Okay. <clears throat> um... Maybe teacher, um, I had the same conversation in all these spaces because uh, I already know what my problem is and I try to work in it. Uh, and it's because about the structure of the sentences. And one of my, uh, one of my so yeah, weaknesses, weaknesses. Yeah, my weaknesses is about using the participle. That is my, my weakness. Because oh, I, I already understand, because for example, in the sentence, esta, I have been, okay, understand that. And in, mm. in other cases, it's like, I'm confusing about the German and using the, 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 the participle as well. So it, that is, it's like, I already use it. I, I can use it in a sentences and maybe I can talk um, with the participle and with the Germans. But I don't know how I can do it just because I remember I hear it and I learn, but I don't know why. I don't know how I know because I already tried to 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 mem memorize it. And, and yeah, maybe that is my, my biggest problem. Okay, very nice. I'm gonna give you an, a standard uh, structure for sentences. Okay. Remember, subject is going to be used as Always. It doesn't matter the tense. You're going to need a subject. Okay. Okay. Then you're going to need an auxiliary. Then you're going to use a verb. In some cases, it can be in past. Okay. It can be simple past. Simple past. In some cases can be like in past uh, participle. In some cases can be in main verb or in base form, right? Base form. In some cases can be like ing form, right? Okay. okay. This is a, a general structure. And then we have the complement. Okay, this is a general structure. This is a general one. Okay, es una regla general. Que usted la va a utilizar siempre. Okay, por ejemplo, ¿qué es lo que usted tiene que... What is the one thing you need to focus? Primero saber qué auxiliar. Okay, si usted habla, por ejemplo, del 
presente perfecto del auxiliar sería have. ¿Verdad? Ah. Okay. Si usted habla del presente perfecto progresivo, el auxiliar sería have been. Si usted habla del pasado perfecto, estaría hablando del auxiliar had. Si usted, si usted quiere hablar del pasado perfecto progresivo, sería had been. Ok, entonces estos son, en el caso de los perfectos, pero que estamos hablando de los perfectos, los auxiliares que podrían ser. De los sujetos no le, no le menciono porque los sujetos son los mismos en todos los tiempos. I, you, he, okay. she, it, we, and that, ¿verdad? Okay. Pero los auxiliares okay. varían según el tiempo. Entonces, los presentes tienen el presente perfecto, que es el have, el presente perfecto progresivo, que es el have y el been, el pasado perfecto y el pasado perfecto progresivo. Ok, ¿qué es lo que pasa? Ya tenemos los auxiliares, entonces ya identifiqué qué auxiliar, ¿verdad? Ahora falta que ver, como he decidido, what time, o sea, qué tiempo, cuál es la forma en la que voy a utilizar el verbo. Nos vamos al presente perfecto. A pesar de que es un pre presente perfecto, el auxiliar es have, pero el verbo que utilizo está en past participle. Ok, so, entonces ya para esta estructura va para todos los tiempos. Si aquí yo le puedo hacer la lista de todos los tiempos y decirle cuáles son los auxiliares, pero ahorita lo vamos a enfocar en esta, ¿verdad? Que es la que usted tiene duda. Sí. Ok. Entonces, el auxiliar del presente perfecto es el have y el verbo va en pasado. Participio. Y entonces yo hago una oración. ¿Cómo? Ah, diría, por ejemplo, I have studied for Five years. Ok, y aquí tenemos una oración en presente perfecto. Present perfect. Yo he estudiado por cinco años. Significa que aún sigo estudiando. O sea, es algo que está sucediendo todavía. Sí, o sea, que viene desde cinco años atrás. Mm. I have studied for five years. He estado estudiando por cinco años. Y yo todavía in no estoy estudiando. En este caso, we using a regular verb. But for example, it wasn't a regular verb like gone. Ah, ok. Imagine that you're gone. The verb the bear go, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's gone. It's an ir irregular. Ok. Yeah. I have gone to, um, ¿cómo se llama la nueva que han abierto en, en uh, Surf City? Surf City, yeah, Surf City. Okay, Surf City, Surf City, okay. I have gone to Surf City. Yo he ido al Surf City. Okay. Okay, ¿qué es la diferencia acá? Los, los que son regulares son facilitos porque solamente les agregamos ED. Sí. Con los, los irregulares no hay una regla. Sino que nos toca aprendernos. Ajá. Ajá. Vaya, por ejemplo, hay un, hay, hay, sí hay tres formas. Hay una forma en la cual el, el verbo es el mismo, tanto en presente como en pasado simple y en pasado participio. Son un grupo de verbos. Están los cortitos. Cut, Ajá, por ejemplo, put, cut, uh, cut, 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 put, put, uh -huh. right. Ok. Uh, pero tenemos los otros grupos que, por ejemplo, son de una, de una forma en el presente y de otra forma en el pasado simple y en el pasado participio. Solo en el presente cambia. Luego tenemos un tercer grupo que son diferentes en las tres formas, tanto en el presente como en el pasado simple como en el pasado participio. Entonces, lo que yo tengo que hacer es meterlos acá en el chip. Okay. Ok, very nice. Ahora vamos con el have been. O sea Cuando... que have been es un auxiliar, no es que verbo, no, no es que auxiliar y verbo. No, es auxiliar, ambos son auxiliares. Ok. Porque yo tengo que identificar el verbo. 
si yo okay. no identifico el verbo central en una oración, entonces me voy a perder. Ok. Ahora, pero sí quiero que analice algo. Que todos los auxiliares son verbos. Ajá. Ajá, solo ahí va a depender en qué posición están. Correcto. Por ejemplo, si usted utiliza el verbo have, es tener. Ah, claro. Pero acá no está haciendo verbo, está haciendo auxiliar. Ok. Diferente es que yo hago una oración y diga, por ejemplo, I have had problem. Ok. Yo he tenido Ajá, ok, muy nice. Ok. Vamos acá. Ahora, has been es un auxiliar. El been es el pasado participio del verbo to be. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ok. ¿Qué es lo que me hace acá? Esto es algo que en progreso. Entonces ya no llevo pasado simple ni llevo pasado participio, sino que llevo ing. Ah, Por ejemplo, I have, I have been studying. Ajá. For... I have been studying. Right? For more than three years, por ejemplo. La primera dice, yo he estudiado por cinco años. Ok. Ok. Esta dice, yo he estado estudiando por más de tres años. Cambia, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Acá ya el verbo ya no lo llevo en participio. Lo llevo en gerundio. Ahí en G. Ahora, uh -huh. okay, okay. para que se me haga fácil, esto mismo se aplica con el had y el had been. And what is the difference between have In have. La diferencia con ah, el have. De, el tiempo. Sí, con la diferencia con el have es que estos dos están en presentes. O sea que yo todavía también, a pesar de que he estado estudiando por más de tres años, sigo estudiando. Okay, ahora, okay. ahora veamos, vamos a convertir la primera oración a pasado participio, que es esto. El auxiliar es had y siempre llevamos el verbo en pasado participio. Entonces yo hago la oración y digo... I had studied um, English. And if, if, if I put the same sentences, but only in past, I can say I had studied since five years. I had, yes. Okay. I had studied for five years. Yo había estudiado por cinco años. Hoy sí ya no estudio más. O sea, ah, ya entendí. Ok. Ajá. Pero lo que, por lo que me están preguntando, por ejemplo, me están preguntando, imaginémonos que algo que hice en el 2000, digamos que el 2020. Ok. Y yo ya, vi, yo ya terminé de estudiar, había terminado de estudiar para esa fecha. Entonces usted dice, I had studied for five years. Yo había estudiado por cinco años. Pero me cansé un ejemplo. Me salí. Okay. 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 ok. Ya para terminar, pero me salió. Ok. I had studied for five years. O sea, yo había estudiado. Significa mm -hmm. que hoy ya no. En... Y Ajá. en este caso, con el, el tema del el have been, este es, o sea, como es un auxiliar completo, siempre es el been. Nunca been. va a ser diferente. Nunca va a ser diferente. Ok. Ok. Ahora vamos con el have been. I had been studying. Oh my God, studying for more than three years. Okay, acá ya digo. Imaginémonos que alguien me está preguntando sobre cosas del pasado. Yo le le conté que pues yo me había estado estudiando, había estado estudiando por más de tres años. Había okay. estado estudiando por más de tres años y decido irme para Estados Unidos. 
o decidí irme para Estados Unidos. O sea, que le estoy contando a alguien que antes de irme para Estados Unidos yo había estado estudiando por más de tres años. O sea, ya no más, pero en aquel entonces sí había estado estudiando por más de tres años. O sea, que los, los perfect tense, lo que yo tengo que hacer es aprenderme la estructura, pero no solo para el perfect tense, para, perdón, ya me enredé, para los perfect tenses, sino para todo. Yo siempre debo recordar que en una oración afirmativa voy a llevar un, un sujeto. Nunca me va a faltar un sujeto. Un auxiliar, un verbo que puede ir en pasado simple, puede ir en participio, puede ir en su forma base o puede ir en ING. Y un complemento. Estas tres cosas son esenciales. Bueno, son uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Son esenciales. Right? Entonces yo tengo okay. que aprenderme eso. Si la hago negativa... ¿Qué es lo que pasa? Que después del auxiliar solamente le agrego el not a esta estructura. Okay. Si la hago pregunta, ¿qué es lo que voy a hacer? Simplemente pasar el auxiliar al inicio y luego paso el sujeto y acá agregar el question mark. Okay. Ajá. Entonces yo debo trabajar con esto porque es lo que me va a dar pauta para yo identificar. Y así cuando usted vea una oración, se analiza y dice, bueno, tengo el sujeto, este tiene que ser el auxiliar porque después del sujeto va el auxiliar y este el verbo. Y esto ya lo demás es el complemento. Que, y usted así empieza a analizar las oraciones. Ok. Ok. Uh, ¿Some observation? Uh, no, uh, I think it's very clear. And I already uh, take a picture for okay. study. Uh, okay. Just um, to finish, maybe an observation, if you can give me some advice Uh, in order that uh, you can hear me, I know there are only two days, but <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I don't know. It's just some advice. Uh, in order to um, speak, what or... you hear, uh, uh, what you hear, or about the speak of the fluency, I don't know. Okay, I, okay. I already know that I need more vocabulary, but yeah. Yes. Okay. What I can see on you. You are really good at English. I told you before because your pronunciation is really clear. Um, but what you need is to uh, try to be confident on you. Be sure. Confía en usted. Be sure on you. Okay. okay. Commit mistakes. Equivocase. I'm not going to laugh if you got a mistake. No me voy a reír si usted se equivoca. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm going to be proud because uh, uh, mistakes are part of the process. Los errores son parte del proceso, right? So um, I need you to get mistakes. I like when you ask too much, when you ask me for this, because I, I know that you're paying attention. Okay. Uh -huh. So, but what you need to um, get focused on is to try to rely more on vocabulary Try to look for vocabulary that is really used on you daily. Okay. For example, um, things that you use in your workplace, uh, things you use in your house, uh, moments that you used to have, um, places you like to go, food that you like to eat, drinks that you like to drink, um, okay. things that you like to do. L look for vocabulary that you can use daily in order to uh, try to handle conversation and talk on yourself. Habla usted sola. Ah, oh, okay. Uh -huh. uh, it, it try to make you a part A and part B at the same time. For example, like this, imagine you have a conversation, Belen, how are you today? Oh, I'm good, very nice. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm learning English and you, what about, oh, well, I'm going to my work and try to create conversation like this. Okay. Okay, and it doesn't matter if people say, oh, She's crazy. What happened? Is there, you know, <laughs> doesn't matter, right? It's because yeah. it's your process. You you know what you want, so you you work for it. Okay. Okay. Try to listen to music in English, uh, lyrics, because music helps us to um, make our our tongue developed. Actually, I already uh, reading a book. Uh, oh. I started reading an English book that that I already know because. I already know the, the history, so I just uh, read it in, in English to try to understand the words. Okay, very nice. Perfect. Um, use your cell phone in English in order to get accustomed because cell phones okay. are 
sometimes have different language and, and you learn, ah, oh, this means like this, because we already know what the cell phones stuff are. Ya sabemos cuáles son las partes del teléfono y, yeah. y cómo hacer algo, ¿verdad? Okay, but when you have an English, sometimes you learn, ah, oh, this is like this. Ah, esto se dice como esto, esto se como esto, okay? And okay. one more thing, try to write in English um, like in a, no como un diario, right? Si no trate como escribir en las tardes o en las noches o cuando usted tenga tiempo, ¿qué le gustó del día y qué no le gustó? Okay. Okay, escrito. Yeah. Escriba, por ejemplo, um, today it was not good for me to have like this, uh, it was good for me to have this, etc. Haga eso para que vaya practicando el reading y para que también su mente vaya acostumbrando a descifrar estas palabras y cómo decir esto y lo otro. Si hay una palabra que no la sabe decir, búsquela ¿da? y trate de aprendérsela y luego lo lleva. Ok. okay. Very nice. Thank you, teacher. Okay, good night, sweet dreams. Good night, too. Okay. Thank you.